patients need to be great partners in their own care. You can only do so much as a doctor. You can get that into remission, right? But it's up to the patient to keep it in remission by being compliant with those medications. But also the best medicine of all is walking, but not just any walking. How do you walk effectively to grow those beautiful collateral vessels or what are known as natural bypasses around the blocked arteries in the legs? That, that, is, a, that is a great question, Kim. So first of all, when, when we have patients who claudicate, which means that it hurts when they walk, when it hurts when they walk, if this is the femoral artery, that's at the level of, of the middle of the thigh, if that artery is the one that has this disease, growing those collaterals requires, just as you said, walking. It, it is essential, but it requires just like going to the gym. You have to do this every single day. And you don't do it because you did it for 15 minutes. Muhammad Ali, they used to ask him, how many abs do you do? And he would say, well, I don't, I don't start counting until it hurts. And we should apply the same thing when we're walking. It's not a matter of going out and walking 15, 20 minutes a day at, at the indoor mall that's local. It's actually walking through to where your legs ache. And then when they ache, pushing, if you can, maybe another half block or another block, and then taking a break and doing that three or four times consecutively. And that will help grow those collaterals. But it's not about time. People say, oh, I walk 45 minutes twice a day. But you watch them walk and you're like, no, that, that doesn't count. You're barely walking. You're, you're window shopping. That doesn't count. We have patients that will call us and, and say, but I've been walking, I don't understand. I mean, I walk one to two miles every single day. I've been doing this for 15 years. And then suddenly my legs start hurting. That doesn't make sense but that my doctor now wants me to walk. I don't get it. And the doctors are not teaching their patients exactly what you said, that it's not just about going out and just leisurely walking. It's about pushing yourself just as you do at the gym, like you were saying, you know, give me that one extra rep, give me that one extra rep. You're not going to grow that bicep. You're not going to get those muscles unless you push that extra rep. And that is such a great way to think about it, that when you're walking, you're not going to push it. You're not going to build those collateral vessels until you push through that pain. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And so it's still tough, though, to convince your patients to push through that pain, isn't it? So the, the tricky thing is um, some patients, they develop a more sudden development of the of that femoral artery disease. So it's harder for them to grow collaterals because they, they have nothing's even possibly being built up. And that's where the possibility of adding medications could help. Now, we do have medications that, in theory, in theory, um, it help blood squeak its way through these smaller arteries, collateral. So we've got low dose aspirin. We have low dose Xarelto. We have the classic medicines that started in the 70s and the 80s, Pletol and Trentol, which are the first line therapy for patients who have purely claudication. And there is pretty good evidence that the combination of these will help that patient be able to walk, hurt, and be able to walk through it. But sometimes you have to hold their hand in that process. I can't just tell them, well, go walk. But here's a walking program, a 12-week walking program, and we're going to try these medications. And if they don't work, we're going to escalate these medications. And if that doesn't work, well, then maybe we consider it some type of therapy, more invasive therapy. But what, it, it does require lots of hand-holding. Yep. What are the indications for a vasodilator such as Salatazol or Pletol? So the American Heart Association, Society of Vascular Surgery, the American College of Cardiology recommends um, Pletol as first-line therapy, as first-line therapy in the absence of severe congestive heart failure. And that patient that comes that says, you know what, my, my calf hurts. I used to be able to walk, just like you said, one or two miles a day. And you know what, I can't even make it to the mailbox and back. It would be considered that that is first-line therapy. In combination, in combination with that secondary treatment of all the risk factors, where as were the aspirin, the ACE inhibitors, the statins, the smoking cessation, all of those things play a role. And you have to you have to combine them. You have to combine them. But that's exactly where they play in. 